All right, now in the world of mixed martial arts, there have been a ton of different criminals ranging from some very petty offenses all the way up to some of the worst things imaginable that you could possibly do to another person. I'm going to try to get through this the best I can without laughing. I've had to restart a few times because of some jokes that I've made that were probably not okay for YouTube, but either way, dude. We are going to start with D tier, okay, and work our way up. D tier being some very petty offenses, some of which are not even formal charges, by the way. And we are going to move up to, like I said, S and A, dude, absolutely heinous material. Okay, so just keep that in mind if you are weak of stomach. Now, you know, some people are going to be left off this list simply for the sake of time and also relevancy, right? If we were here tallying up every single DUI from a fighter, we would be here all day and night. You know what I mean? And you could honestly do this list for boxing as well, and it might take even longer. But either way, dude, let us get started right away. We're going to start in the D tier, move our way up. First person going into that D tier spot is the taxi thief himself, Darren Till, okay? And also, he's going to be starring as the main character in GTA Liverpool. Absolute menace to society once he's gotten a few drinks in him and he goes around looking for, you know, chauffeur vehicles uh, to steal. Not even because he wants to do like a GTA mission where he goes and picks up customers and drives them to their destination just for the sake of being an absolute shithead okay which is kind of funny but also kind of dangerous at the same time because you should not drink and drive or steal taxi cabs all right now moving on to the next person in d tier this one is not a formal charge but i will make my case right now fallon fox okay now fallon fox like i said not formally charged with any crime however one could argue has committed heinous acts against nature slash God, whatever you believe in, okay, when he decided he was going to become a woman, which is something you can't do, and go on to fight women that didn't know he was a man, okay, and break their orbital bones and all the rest of it, all right, Fallon Fox, you are a, you know, you should be formally charged, you know, and if you won't be, well, Mother Nature will hold you accountable when you are rotting in the ground. Moving on to the next person in this D tier spot is another one that has not been formally charged. Okay, Josh Fabia. Now, some people might think this guy should be higher up on the list, and maybe, you know what, but I'll make the case. Now, again, not formally charged, but has committed some acts of like extortion, coercion, and all the rest of it, and stole robbed us of a UFC veteran in Diego Sanchez. Okay, now the reason he's not higher up on this list is because uh, Diego Sanchez is a full-grown man who should have agency, right? He's not a child. He's not a baby, right? He's not a woman. So what are you doing, dude? How are you getting, how are you getting swindled by this guy? You're a professional fighter and you believe the, the stuff this guy was saying about fighting. It's absolutely unhinged. But that doesn't mean that Diego Sanchez, or pardon me, that Josh Fabia did not commit some pretty disgusting acts, okay? He should be charged maybe one day. But either way, we're moving on to the next person in D tier. Hamzat Shemaev. Again, dude, we have got a theme going on. Not formally charged, technically speaking, but uh, a crypto scammer. Okay, scammed his fans out of a bunch of money. Pretty gross. Had his manager take the blame for it. And listen, much like the, the former two, Hamzat's got a bit of a defense here. Right, he's got a bit of a defense. He can say, well, listen, I'm so stupid Okay, that I don't know how computers or how crypto works. I didn't mean to do it and it was my manager and all the rest of it. So he does have like, he complete ignorance in a sense. Do you know what I mean? Now moving on to the next person in D tier. Again, no formal charges have been have been filed as of right now, but Aljamain Sterling, dude, this guy, in my opinion, committed an absolutely heinous act of fraud to the UFC fan base when he acted, like you can see in the photo here, to get himself awarded the UFC bantamweight champion uh, ship of the world, okay? Horrible. Now, you know, again, like the former people, Aljamain Sterling's got a bit of a defense here. He can say something along the lines of, well, let's make a but for argument. But for Piotr Jan kneeing me in the head illegally, I wouldn't have had to do the things that I had to do, but that does not absolve you of all moral responsibility, Aljamain Sterling. That's why you made this list. Okay, now moving on to the next person in that D tier spot, and this will be Habib Nurmagomedov. Now, Habib Nurmagomedov has only not been charged because he had like a, a what, what do you call it, like a sanctuary in the Middle East, right? He's been, the Russian government's going after him for tax evasion. He has had all of his stuff seized, all his vehicles, his homes, all the rest of it. 
owes them like 3 million USD or something along those lines. And if he was to go back to Russia, he would probably be arrested. Okay. And listen, dude, a little bit based, if I'm being honest, dude, tax evasion kind of based, but also kind of illegal. Okay. Moving on to the final person in D tier, Francis Ngannou. All right. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, what do you mean? Francis Ngannou's never been charged or convicted of a crime. And well, I get that, right? But, you know, he is literally an illegal immigrant. And an illegal immigrant, tautologically speaking, is illegal, okay? And whether or not you think it's morally okay or or whatever you think about it, uh, just because it's just, you know, it's just Francis Ngannou. Just keep in mind, for every Francis Ngannou that does that, we get, you know, what, 10 to, tw who, who knows, dude, a bunch of ones that are not Francis Ngannou, if you know what I'm saying. I'm going to leave it at that because this is where I had to stop the video uh, last time. Okay, we're going to move on to C tier. All right, our first person in C tier, we're going to trigger a bunch of the BLMMA fans with this one. Israel Adesanya, whatever his name is, dude. I don't know the rest of it. Israel Adesanya, dude, DUI. We know why, dude. He looks fucked up in that picture. Don't he? That's not even a mugshot, bro. Pretty embarrassing. Either way, I don't like drunk drivers, okay? And yes, I'm aware he was only a little bit over the limit. To me, still an issue. I don't like it. I know a lot of people that have died doing that. I know people that have died... From being hit by those kinds of people, it is not okay to do. And just because you only had a little bit doesn't mean you're safe to drive, especially not when you drive like Israel Adesanya, allegedly road raging in a McLaren. Do you know what I mean? So, Israel Adesanya, don't do that. You know, not good of you. And um, got you on this list, my boy. Got you on this list. Moving on to the next person in C tier. Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Okay, now most people should know what this is about, dude. He has he assaulted Colby Covington, bro. Knocked his tooth out or chipped it or whatever it was. Injured his Rolex. Not okay, dude. Sucker punch too, which is like a moral offense in and of itself, dude. You don't sucker punch another guy, especially when, hey, bro, you had 25 minutes to do what you wanted to do in the cage. You didn't do shit. And then, you know, you got salty about it. And you also tried to create this narrative while he was talking about your kids and all the rest of it, which is not really the case, is it, right? He was more or less, well, I mean, he did mention your kids, but it was to take a shot at you. He was calling you a deadbeat dad, which I understand probably hurt deep down. But, you know, you can't go out and committing crimes. But based on, you know, what we've seen from his father and all the rest of it, it makes sense. Moving on to the next person in C tier. Chael P. Sonnen, dude. The white collar criminal. Uh, you know, pled guilty to fraud, if I'm not mistaken, which is also absolutely based. I can't find a real mugshot of him, though, so maybe this is just a bullshit story, but either way, he made the list, okay? It is a very good story when he tells it, but, you know, uh, when, when, when people commit crimes like that, most of the time the money gets paid back, and not by the people who it was let, like, you know what I mean, dude? Banks got it covered. All right, anyways, moving on. 2C tier, Jeff Neal, dude, this guy. Another dui -er. Not okay, Jeff Neal. Not okay. Not to mention, you know, if we were compounding charges, I might, he might get bumped up to a B-tier. However, this B-tier category is reserved for a special kind of piece of shit. Okay, and we're going to get there. Um, so I'm, I'm leaving Jeff Neal in this one, uh, you know, for, for now. But got a DUI and then also a weapons charge. So he was drinking and driving and also was illegally or illegally in possession of a weapon. So a weapon he wasn't supposed to have, right? And now there's going to be people that argue, well, that's unconstitutional and maybe it is, but you should also follow your state laws. You also shouldn't drink and drive and be in possession of said weapon. Okay. Now moving on to the next person in C tier, Connor McGregor. All right. Now there's going to be a bunch of dudes that get triggered that he's not higher up on this list but like i said the next three categories are reserved for special kinds of pieces of shit also most of what conor mcgregor has been accused of is simply just that these are accusations so conor mcgregor is here for his reckless driving charges which i believe he actually pled guilty to or whatever so it might have been a dui as well I know he got his driver's license suspended. I'm pretty sure it was for reckless driving. That's why he's on here. Dude seems to have a real issue when it comes to not driving like an asshole, um, which is, you know, it's it's not good. You're, you're putting the public in danger, but also it's not the worst crime you could possibly commit, right? And I, I think that he has not been charged with a DUI, but was, which makes him better than Israel Adesanya, okay? Moving up or n on. Anyways, Tony Ferguson, dude. First of all, 
Again, dude, this was a hard list to make because I had to separate these categories and make hard, hard decisions. Like when you guys see A tier, you're going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? How did he not put them all in S? But I had to reserve that, you know, the one special spot. So Tony Ferguson in, has been charged with both uh, DUI, which he flipped his truck, which could have potentially injured a fuck ton of people, which I really don't like. Okay. I don't care if it's Tony Ferguson. Not okay. Also, uh, something else that Tony Ferguson has been charged with or that I've charged him with, I've pressed charges just as to, uh, of today is an unlicensed circumcision. Oh no, not a circumcision. I mean, I mean an exorcism. I didn't mean a circumcision. Tony didn't do that. Okay. I, I take that back. An un, oh fuck. Why did I have that on my brain? A unregistered, unlicensed exorcism of his wife in which he tried to douse her with holy water and all the rest of it okay so you know that's that's a pretty bad one again if we were much like jeff neal if we were compounding things we might bump him up and you know if connor if the lady that he kicked off that yacht pressed criminal charges maybe he would get bumped up as well but like i said b tier uh well kind of you know there's one guy that's not so much of a piece of shit but let's get to it right now b tier dude luis pena okay this dude listen bro absolute scumbag also just scumbag he domestic abuse bit his wife hit his wife and all the rest of it i mean what kind of dude what are you biting her for dude you're a professional fighter you gotta fight dirty against a lady hello you absolute fucking mongoloid looking thing jesus christ okay i you know and again crimes like this I, you know, they're not good. I'm not saying that they're not that bad because they're in the B tier, which is the middle of this list. What I'm saying is, is that A and S are fucking unhinged. Okay, now moving on to John Jones, right? There's going to be a bit of a theme here. Minus one person. Another domestic abuser. Again, much like Jeff Neal, much like Tony Ferguson, if we were compounding these charges, he might get bumped up. And if the people that weren't in A and S, you know, if they, if they weren't there, John Jones is an A tier criminal at least a tier criminal duis fucking galore okay hitting a prank you know what dude i almost want to move him up to a tier i'm a little irritated we're gonna put him right here for now because you know what dude you're gonna you're gonna understand why i didn't just immediately put him in a tier uh when we get there Moving on to the next person in B tier, Lee Murray. Okay, now this guy's a absolute, you know, kind of cool, a bank robber, dude. A little cool in, in a way. But also, Lee Murray allegedly was like an absolute menace to society and would just walk around the streets of London or wherever the fuck he's from, hitting random people and would harass shopkeeps, which is like, why are you doing that, bro? What are you doing? Do you know what I mean? And then he goes on to steal $50 million from a bank, which, you know, kind of based also a little cool. And, but, you know, also, you can't do that, you know? You, you just can't. So also, if we're comparing that crime to some of the ones down below, I mean, it is much more hardcore. That takes an actual legitimate criminal to pull something like that off. Next person in B tier is Greg Hardy. Okay, Greg Hardy, much like Luis Pena, much like John Jones, a domestic abuser. Um, you know, like I said, there's going to be a bit of a theme here. I'm still tossed uh, or torn up on where, where to put John Jones. He's also a little ditty, but hey, listen, dude, we'll get there. Okay. We'll figure it out once we get to the A tier. Now we're going to move on to A tier right now. All right. BJ Penn. Now I, always, I never realized how bad some of BJ's, uh, BJ Penn's crimes were fucking horrible, dude. He was like allegedly terrorizing his girlfriend, his est estranged girlfriend. It says threatening to kill her and her family in front of her kids. I know he attacked a neighbor with a machete Right, he gets in bar fights regularly, but the abuse that he levied towards his girlfriend is what landed him in this A tier spot. Because unlike a Luis Pena or a Greg Hardy, um, there were multiple kinds of abuse that um, you know, went on. I don't really want to bring it up or say the word at the very least. I don't want to get demonetized. But uh, pretty heinous shit. If you want to go look into it, you can do so on your own time. Like I said, I do not want to get demonetized. Moving on to the second person in A tier. And that is the, uh, you know, the inspiration for the thumbnail. Alexander Emelianenko, Fedor's brother. Looks like, an, like a fat Charles Manson in this picture. Absolutely nightmare fuel. However, he is a, uh, much like what BJ Penn was doing 
Um, he was charged of that, convicted of that after pleading not guilty and sentenced to, I think, five years in prison or something along those lines and had to pay a pretty hefty, I guess, in, in rubles. Uh, I think it was like 50,000 rubles, which I'm not sure. That's not a lot of USD, but either way, um, same kind of shit as BJ Penn, just the, the, you know, the, 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 you know, you know, the flavor of drink that a certain demographic enjoys. Uh, but either way, dude, moving on. Moving on to the next person in A tier. See, this is why, dude, you're going to understand why I couldn't put John Jones just directly in A tier when we were going through it. Okay, War Machine, right? These people that are in A tier, while I think John Jones is an absolute scumbag, these are some of the worst people like on the planet. And I'm sure that there's people that are in here and they're like, how are, how are, how is he not in S tier? And you'll see, dude, you'll see how he's not in S tier. But War Machine, uh, if you know his story, you'll know why he's here absolute disgusting human horrible horrible things he did to his ex-girlfriend much like the former too um just pretty brutally though like there's i mean there's a lot of stories uh of this stuff you can go or videos and, and all the rest of it documentary style videos you can go watch on this shit absolutely fucking unhinged unhinged from uh, War Machine. And that's why John Jones, right? Like I said, it's tricky to put John Jones in A tier with the likes of these people who have done the things that they did. That is a completely different kind of crime. The only reason why I almost considered putting John Jones in that A tier spot was because of the pregnant lady that he hit. I'll leave him down there with Greg Hardy and Luis Pena. Okay. And now we have finally gotten to our final spot on this list, which again, you're probably thinking, how are these three here? Not in that top spot and that's because there is somebody even more unhinged than them and that is joe sun this guy fought on ufc4 he was finished by getting punched in the balls if i'm not mistaken um you know he he has a submission loss to terror which is a status effect in Sekiro. i'm not sure how that fucking worked out maybe he ran out of divine confetti or pacifying agent i don't i don't really know but the shit this guy did is un believable okay unbelievable and like i i i'm not reading it out to you guys because you know um i i would get demonetized but you can go look this up for yourself if you want it's all on the wikipedia page for him but what's crazy about this story is is this guy was first arrested on like a vandalism charge right he kicked in the uh his the door of his roommate's car or something along those lines he pled guilty in that plea deal uh he was asked to submit dna evidence right and he did because of that he ended up getting his his dna ended up matching with a cold case from years prior i guess and uh you know it was really bad kidnapping torture um all kinds of forced endeavors like horrific shit and then went on to kill his cellmate Okay, so this guy is, that's why he's, S, that's why these other guys beneath him can't be S here. He took it a step above. He's not only a horrific kidnapper, torturer, um, assaulter of the worst possible kind you could do, uh, but he's also a murderer. Do you know what I mean? So, absolutely heinous, okay? Absolutely heinous. Um, you know, the people, a lot of the people at the bottom of this list, dude, it's a joke. Chill the fuck out, right? But... Honestly, if I've left somebody off here that you think of, there was one case I, uh, off the top of my head, I know of a guy who, uh, was like eating his roommate or some shit. They found his, either way, because of uh, a bad mushroom trip or something along those lines, but he was not very famous. He wasn't in the UFC. Yes, I understand. Uh, Alexander was not in the UFC either. Most of these guys are UFC fighters. Every single one of them, I think actually, except for Fallon Fox, Josh Fabia, but he was related to the UFC. Um, Alexander Emelianenko, and that's it. Joe Sun was UFC four. That was his mixed martial pro mixed martial arts debut. Okay, so you know these are who I believe to be <laughs> the worst criminals in all of mixed martial arts. Okay, at the very least, the top of the list. But if I've left anybody out, dude, that you think is significant enough to be on here, let me know down in the comments below. And uh, you know. Casey Kenny could have been somewhere around the Tony Ferguson, John Jones mark. People like that. But like I said, relevancy and, and whatever else. So like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.